Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and uh, now that my two informative videos are done for the day, it's time to talk about current events in the online fitness community. And today I'm going to talk to you guys about this guy called The Shred, who a bunch of people have contacted me about. Uh, and quite frankly, I don't care about most of the stuff people are complaining about with him, but what I do care about is him putting out extremely bad information about the bench press. So let me put on my plus five out of weaponsmithing. Work on skill up my crafting a little bit and let's talk about this. Now on a side note, before we get started, uh, rather than make a complete video about this, a lot of stuff gets attributed to me saying it online that I didn't actually say. There are enormous numbers of not only fake catfish stuff, like people who pretend to be me online, fake YouTube channels who engage people, threaten them, all sorts of stuff, uh, people who send threatening emails who are not me, and a lot of fake screenshots. And there's even been forum posts that have been attributed to me that I didn't actually write. Now I gotta get into all that. So if people are out there, if you're a smaller YouTube channel and you think I have written on your wall or sent you a message, I haven't. So if, if I have not made a video directly addressing you saying, hey, don't come near me or whatever, like I did with who Michael Hurd and Alan Roberts, that's the only guys I have, uh, and I didn't send you my cell phone number and we didn't talk over the phone because yeah I have talked to other youtubers over the phone quite a few guys out there do have my cell phone uh, Some of them who don't like me If I did not contact you either in my video or my channel or someone else couldn't remix it where you saw it on my channel or We did not talk over the phone. Don't assume it was me Because odds are there's a 99% chance it's Somebody pretended to be me. It's not me I'll address you directly in a way to where you'll know it's me if there's any ambiguity about it. Uh, and again, my voice is pretty recognizable if we get on the phone and talk. So all these channels out there who think I'm threatening them, you're being catfish. It's not me. It's not me. In fact, I'm not really the sort of person who would warn you first. Now, that being said, this the shred guy. You know, he made a video talking about the bench press, and everyone's saying, oh, he's stealing all of Athlean X, Jeff Cavalier stuff. I don't care. That's between him and Jeff. Maybe he is, maybe he isn't. Uh, I probably need to look into that more to see if it's worth my time. You know, I did call out Kenobi for stealing uh, all the lean gain stuff from Martin Burkham. And he started admitting and giving some credit there, finally. Uh, but as far as all that goes, that's between him and Jeff. Uh, people recycle information. It is what it is. What I'm concerned with is a guy coming in telling people not to lower the bar all the way down on the bench press. He's saying, if you've been lowering the bar all the way to your chest for years, you probably have shoulder problems. I'm 41 years old. I have benched 425 raw in comp, which required a pause on the chest. I'm 41. I started bench pressing two decades ago. I have zero shoulder problems. Uh, this guy clearly does not know what he's talking about. All right? Even the technique that he demonstrated when he only came part of the way down, he had his elbows way flared out. This person does not know how to bench press. He has no business teaching the bench press. This person has about as much business trying to discuss and teach the bench press, who clearly doesn't know how to perform the exercise, has zero chest development. I mean, he's turned to the side and he's got no pecs. It's like, no, 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 to hear his pecs are like way back here. Like at his armpit when he turned to the side in this video. He has no chest development. He has no bench press strength. He has no business teaching the exercise. He doesn't understand the biomechanics behind the exercise. He has no business teaching it. He has about as much business being an expert on the bench press as I do getting guys contest shredded. All right, put that in perspective. Would anybody here trust me to get you contest ripped or write your diet? I doubt it because it's not my wheelhouse. I very obviously don't get shredded. I don't, I definitely don't get contest shredded. I have never successfully prepped anybody for a bodybuilding show in my entire life. I've never prepped anybody. So it would be foolish to get advice from me on that. It's not my wheelhouse. This individual has about the same level of knowledge. He probably has less knowledge of the bench press than I have about getting people contest ripped. He has less knowledge of it. At least I understand the fundamentals. I understand the basics. Don't necessarily know how to apply it ideally, but I understand the concept. 
Um, he's talking about, look, shoulder problems from the bench press. The only people who get shoulder problems from the bench press, the way he's describing, are people who do it the way he's doing it, which means elbows flared way out here. That's the problem. A proper bench press, you go below the nipple line. The bar should be below the nipple, and at the bottom, you should have 45 degrees of tuck. This is the farthest you flare your elbows out at the bottom. Not out here, down here. Touch the chest and press. Come down, touch the chest, and press. All right, the bench press is probably one of the more dangerous exercises done out there, but it can be done safely. I have tons of videos discussing how to perform it safely, and the problem becomes with touching the chest for people who have it way up high is that it causes internal rotation of the shoulders. But if you have elbow tuck and you bring it down lower, you have no internal rotation of the shoulders. Therefore, you're not putting the shoulder joint and rotator cuffs into that compromised position. Furthermore, if you're on a balanced routine, the muscle imbalances that contribute to this are reduced. They go away. If you do enough overhead pressing, if you do enough rear delt work and pulling and things that will work the posterior end of your shoulder joint, and you have proper bar path, and you don't overtrain, the odds of getting hurt touching your chest on every single rep, even with 400 pounds, is very, very low. The problem he says though, he's like, you know, you, you lose that optimal tension. What do you mean? You're not getting optimal tension. He has no chest. And it's very clear his bench press method is a big part of the reason. It's a big part of the reason. Uh, he seems to me to be one of those mid-rep fluff and pumpers, guys. He wanted to do partials. Well, let me explain how that works. The only people who get results training that way are usually guys who are blasting a ton of gear who have close to Goku-level genetics, all right? Average genetics and no drugs, that sort of training is not going to get you the best results in the world. It's just not. It doesn't work. You really need full range of motion if you're not using a ton of gear. Full range of motion has the lowest injuries on most of your exercises. It's going to produce the most hypertrophy. It's going to give you the most strength. And uh, Nova's going to be loud again. What are you doing, buddy? Hey, come up here. Come here. You want to get on camera? You want to get on camera, buddy? No? Okay. He doesn't want to get on camera. He thought maybe I had food. But full range of motion produces the best results. And the problem with the way that this guy is teaching is that you don't get the stretch on your chest. You don't get... <laughs> activate all the muscle fibers of the pectorals. You need to come all the way down. But you need to have the correct bar path. And the problem with doing partials, as I've said before, the risk of injury is high because eventually you're going to miss a rep. Eventually, if you keep benching way high up here, way above the nipple line, and you stop before you touch your chest, you have nothing to tell when you are at hard contact with your chest. You have nothing to stop the bar from coming down. One day when you have a heavy weight and you miss a rep or your spotter fails to help you and the bar goes lower than you're used to, what's going to happen? See, that's the problem. We're stronger at the lockout. So eventually you're going to get so strong on just doing the top half like he's showing that you're going to be doing sets of 10 with a weight that's heavier than your true one rep max on the full range of motion. What happens over time also is that it will cause some shortening and tightening of the muscle and the tendons because you're not moving it or training it through a full range of motion. All right, you're not moving it through a full range of motion. So over time that will tighten up and then what happens when all of that area gets so tight that you lose mobility because you don't train it through the full range of motion and you don't have any strength at the bottom because you don't have the joint angle specificity carryover when that weight that is heavier than your true one rep max comes down and does hit your chest one day, you're going to tear something. And you're most likely going to tear a pectoral. So in actuality, what he is teaching has the highest risk of injury of any style of benching. All right, What he's teaching is actually going to hurt you a lot worse with a lot higher chance of it happening eventually than doing full range of motion and pausing on your chest, sinking the bar into your chest, with the correct bar path and the correct elbow position. All right, that is the safe way to do it. What he is teaching is considerably more dangerous in the long term. Not only is it more dangerous, not only does it carry a higher degree of risk, 
it will give you less chest development and less strength. So again, this is complete absurdity. Uh, it, it needs to be ignored. This guy does not know what he's talking about. Does not know what he's talking about. Uh, and I'll have to check out more later and see what the guy's saying. A lot of people have asked me to look into things, and this is the only thing that's been sent to me that seemed worth addressing so far, so I thought I would go ahead and do so. Uh, but again, this is a person who really has no business teaching the bench press. He doesn't understand the fundamentals of the exercise. He doesn't understand the biomechanics behind it. He doesn't know how to perform it. Uh, and he has got no chest development, so he doesn't know how to train his chest either. And I'm saying that as a non-bodybuilder who doesn't care about bodybuilding, that even I can see the glaring deficiency there. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.